the Asus E402S is an entry-level 14-inch laptop from 2016. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look and running benchmarks. This particular model is powered by the Intel Celeron N3050, 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of eMMC storage. Released in 2015, it is a 2-core, two 2-thread two CPU with a base speed of 1.6 GHz, boost speed of 2.16 GHz, the TDP is rated at 6 watts. According to Intel, at the time of release, Brasvo is a next-generation multi-core system on a chip based on the 14 nanometer technology. Built for entry-level PCs, due to its low power usage and heat output, it can be used in more compact and portable computers. Introduced in 1998, Celeron is Intel's brand name for low-end computer microprocessor models targeted at low-cost PCs. Celerons are the most affordable at the cost of being generally the slowest. In the performance hierarchy, this is where the Celeron N3050 places compared to a range of CPUs released around the same time in Passmark. A CPU benchmarking software. Hearing the fan run on this under load, I assumed you would have a conventional cooling system where the fan is mounted to the CPU heatsink, like in this picture here. Taking the back cover off reveals this ridiculously small heatsink. Also the fan is set up more like a chassis fan. It draws air through the speaker vents, moves it over the area containing the CPU and other components, exiting through the vent near the bottom of the hinge. As for upgradability, there is provision for a 2.5 inch hard drive. Also, the PCIe Wi-Fi card is removable. For the very reasonable retail price of 270 Australian dollars, five years later, even in 2021, it presents well. The gloss navy dark blue is a fingerprint magnet and scratches very easily. This is how it compares in size to my 15.6 inch Razer laptop. Also weighing at 1.6 kilos, it adds to its portability. The screen is a 1366 by 768 resolution LCD display. This configuration is still the standard in 2021 for 14 inch budget laptops. It's fine in terms of pixel per inch, but it can feel claustrophobic if you're used to the standard 1920 by 1080 on bigger screens. Brightness is excellent, but viewing angles are poor. It has a standard issue, non number pad keyboard found on 14 inch laptops. It's quite pleasant to type on considering in key travel and feedback. The touchpad is respectably sized, the feedback from the click action is loud, and overall it's an unsatisfying experience to use. The speakers are one of its redeeming features, they're made by Asus's in-house premium audio division called Sonic Master. It's one of the best sounding laptop speakers I've heard with amazing bass and treble, it gets loud without distortions. This is what the video from the camera looks like. It's quite records at a maximum resolution of 480p. I had this selection of ports available, including VGA, HDMI, and uh, USB 3.0. Three LEDs on the front are to indicate power, charge, and airplane mode. Supply charger has a power output of 19 volts at 1.75 amps. In Cinebench R15, the CPU test took over 11 minutes to complete with a score of 60. For comparison, unfair or no, the i5-3320M in my Lenovo T430S released 3 years earlier than this Celeron scores 257. The integrated Intel HD graphics returned a score of 12.26 in the OpenGL test. Here's a real-time demonstration on how long it takes Spotify to open. Note there isn't anything wrong with the internet connection. The laptop's just really slow. After waiting for more than 20 minutes for the game to load, I was shocked and very impressed to see GTA 5 actually run on a computer of this spec. I experienced an average of 13 FPS, huge input lag, stuttering and delayed texture loading. I was unable to make it past the prologue mission as the game crashed. Not playable but very impressive. This laptop for me was an impulse purchase trying to escape from my uni assignments. I paid $270 in 2017. 
I rationalized, hey, it should be fine for uni assignments and some YouTube videos, and the slow processor will stop me from gaming. In reality, running Spotify, Microsoft Word, and a few Chrome tabs at the same time, forget about it. I bought it without doing proper research. It even struggled to play back 1080p videos at times. Stepping down from a faster computer and being the PC enthusiast type, after about a month of daily use, I gave up. All the bad mouthing aside, its low performance is what makes it so affordable. I truly believe entry-level laptops play an important role in making education and internet accessible for students and children. I've seen many students in my three years of uni start and finish their studies with similar spec laptops. I never forget children are the future unless Elon Musk releases a Tesla bot. My conclusion is that, that life doesn't always go as planned and from the situations you can learn and tell great stories. Phones and laptops have become digital extensions of ourselves and it's how we communicate, grow and exist in the world now. Lacking performance and adding friction here can directly reduce the quality of our lives. Imagine trying to finish that 3000 word essay during four hours that you haven't started on yet. The last thing you want is your computer slowing you down. In this case, you're actually paying more by saving. And for the great story, I made my first YouTube video about this laptop. After mention, I got a lot of inspirations for this video from these two YouTube channels, Greenham Gaming and 32 Megabytes. Making it through uni was a very difficult time for me and their videos gave me an escape, joy and relieved me of a lot of stress. I hope this video does the same for someone. Thank you for watching.